What's up? My name is Bobby Dodds, and I'm here to tell you about my comedic chapter. Alright, so the prequel. Uh, I pretty much got my start um, in Toledo. I've been funny my whole life. Um, but I had a job and I was working this job and it was just a terrible ass job. And, and I was trying to figure out how I could maybe f make my own path and find my own mark. And so a friend of mine, because I'm always funny, a friend of mine was like, yo, maybe you should try comedy. There's a comedy club around the corner. Um, so I'll get to the club. Uh, a friend of mine uh, invited me to watch him do comedy uh, about a month prior to that. So I watched him. I, he didn't do bad. He didn't die. He didn't do great either. And I figured, oh, shit, I could do that. So I found me uh, some resources, learned about stand-up comedy because all I ever seen was, you know, TV. So I want to try to learn how to do it myself. So um, I taught myself how to do it and learned about comedy uh, specifically, uh, you know, what it takes to drop punchlines and this, that, and third, and, you know, things I should talk about, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then so I went through the process of actually signing up uh, with the comedy club in my area. Um, it was a very, very strenuous process, a scary process, because I, I mean, I had performed, but stand-up comedy is a totally different beast. You by yourself, you ain't got no instruments, it's just you and a mic. So uh, that was scary. Uh, but then I get in it, and I, I do my five minutes up front, and then it's amazing. I do great. The owner likes me. Uh, the comics like me, and uh, and it just snowballed from there. So my 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 um, entrance into comedy was more so uh, kind of like out of necessity. Like I I started when I was 25, so graduated high school. Um, you know, I'd spent six or seven years just doing jobs and jobs and jobs and. You know, I don't have any real skills aside from being funny, to be honest with you. Uh, I just wanted to do what I'm good at. I didn't want to go to school and spend a whole bunch of money on uh, loans and shit like that. I kind of already had that game in my head. Um, so I was just trying to figure out what I could do. And I'm loud. I'm, I'm funny. I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm very um, charismatic. So it was just the right path kind of for me to, to, to pursue. And then from there, it's just... Every night, mics, 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 and uh, and that, that's pretty much it. That's stand up, enjoying the mics and stuff. All right, so now that I'm in comedy, I gotta gotta talk about and learn about the rules of comedy. Um, it's real simple to think that you just going up on stage and people just riffing off the top of the dome, and that is totally not the case. Um, so you want to kind of uh, Practice, practice, practice. Get you a set that you're going to do. Get you some jokes that you know you're going to do. And uh, write them down and practice, practice, practice. I know it looks off the dome. It is not. Um, rules of open mic kind of um, depend on the kind of comedy club that you're at. But there are some kind of rules across the board. Um, the first thing you want to do is call up to the club. Don't think you're just going to show up on a day and get on stage. You got to call up to the club and uh, find out uh, when their open mics are. Uh, it's typically one day a week or one day a month, something like that. Um, you want to call up there and try to get on a list. Uh, once you get on the list, um, you want to try to, um, again, keep practicing your set, practicing your set, practicing your set. Um, the day of the show, when you show up, try to be kind of like a fly on the wall. Don't, don't try to act like you a superstar because you're not. If you're still doing open mics, you're not a superstar. So don't try to act like you're a superstar and run the mic. You want to kind of recede. You want to make sure you're on the list. You want to make sure you're in the right place at the right time. You want to make sure you know your place on the list. And then from there, you want to kind of recede into the darkness and into the background until your name is called on the list. Uh, once your name is called on the list, don't try to act like um, a big shot. Don't try to walk up from the very back of the room like you gotta walk the WWE ring. To the, you know, stand, be ready, stand at the stairs, you know, and uh, be ready when they call 
your name. Because when they call your name, the clock starts and you got five minutes. Um, so you want to make sure that you are at the stage, ready to go when they call your name. Uh, most open mics, you'll get five minutes. Depending on where you at, it's going to be anywhere between three to seven. Um, but five is kind of the general rule. Do your five and get off the stage. If you killing and the five minute uh, light hits, get off the, oh, I'm sorry, you get a minute. They show, they let you know when the, uh, when you got a minute left, they'll flash a light at you from the back. That means you got one minute left, all right? Wrap it up and get off the stage. I know you think you killing it. You never killing it enough to fuck up the time, okay? You never killing it that much. So wrap it up and get off the stage. When you see that light, your last big laugh is your last joke. It don't matter what you have written. That last big laugh is your joke. So go ahead, wrap it up, get that laugh out the way. My name is Bobby. Have a good night. Lead the stage. Once you get off the stage, again, recede into the dark. Don't be in the way of the servers. Don't be in the way of the club. They're conducting a business. They're letting you get on stage as a favor. It's not something that you've earned, all right? So don't act like that. Stay out the way. Mind your business. Don't flirt with the staff either. I know they're cute, and I know it's cool. Don't flirt with the staff. It's a bad look. All right, so why stand up? Um, stand up, naturally, if, you have the, if you're somebody that has the gift of gab, uh, stand up is going to be kind of a natural uh, progression for you. Um, stand up nowadays, you ain't even really got to be all that funny. Um, you just have to have um, the uh, charisma and the, the kind of courage to get up on stage and be able to talk. And you also have to kind of have, uh, you got to have kind of have thick skin for it um, because you're going to, you're going to get pummeled with um, bad sets, you know, not necessarily bad sets, but um, confirmation, a lot of confirmation that something did not work. Um, so if you're somebody with thick skin and somebody that can take that kind of abuse, as we call it in comedy, uh, feel free to give it a shot. Um, for me personally, it was more so about, and I said this earlier, finding my path. Again, I was just kind of floating and just living and paying bills. I was trying to find something that really helped me as an individual uh, express myself um, and uh, and show the, um, just use my skills and talents um, that I already have without even trying to to get uh, to get somewhere uh, to make some kind of push towards, I guess you could say, responsibility and adulthood, like having a career. You know, that's why uh, comedy for me. Um, why not comedy? You definitely don't want to be getting into it for the uh, money uh, because comedy is not at all um, something that you're going to be able to make a bunch of money on up front. So if you're thinking that you're going to get into it and ball out of control because you had a good month at a comedy club, you're totally mistaken. You should probably go find something else to do. Um, uh, another, somebody who is a performer um, may also, that a performer not within comedy, maybe they do uh, other things like plays or, or, uh, or uh, maybe they're a musical artist or maybe uh, they do improv. Um, they may jump into comedy too as kind of a challenge because it is a, it is a very challenging art form. It's one of the only art forms where it's just you. When you're a poet, even when you're a poet, you have rhymes. And when you're a, a musical artist, you have the beat behind you. Um, when you're a comedian, it's your voice and a microphone. So if you're comfortable there, that it may be a reason to give comedy a shot. Um, I can't express enough, though, and explain enough, though, that if you're in it for money and success, get out of it. Get out of, get out of it. It's not, it's, you can be successful, more successful doing other stuff. So, um, you know, it's got to be something that you feel. It's got to be something that you want to do or you're just going to get hurt, <laughs> like boxing. That's what comedy's like boxing. If you're if you're in it for the wrong reasons, you're gonna get hurt. So uh, keep that in mind. All right. So now the material. What are you supposed to talk about now that you done got on stage? Um, quite simply, the best things to talk about are things that are dumb, noticeable about you. Things that as soon as you step on stage, somebody in the audience and already saw, or may even already be thinking about. That's a very easy way to get a quick laugh. I'm a big dude, so when I get on stage, one of the first things I talk about is being a big guy. People can see that I'm bald. The very first thing I mention is the fact that I'm bald and try to get a quick little easy laugh uh, off of that. 
Um, you want to talk about things that are um, A, noticeable, noticeable about you, and B, things that are true to you. Don't go up there making up stuff. Like, you can't be single talking about married life and vice versa. You know, it's it's going to come off as uh, uh, somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. It's going to come off as uh, somebody who's just making it up. The audience can kind of tell. Um, also, the things that you talk about, you want to kind of keep them in the front of your brain all the time. Anytime that anytime something makes you laugh throughout the day, uh, something, that, something that you say that makes somebody else laugh, a smile, anything, you want to write it down. If you're serious about comedy and serious about what material that you're going to be doing, you have got to kind of become a hunter for this material. Um, even if you can't write now in the moment, consider or even imagine how it could formulate into a joke. If it makes somebody laugh, it can be used later. Um, uh, whether it be the punchline of a joke or anything, or it could just be a quick little reference, it can be pulled on stage even if you can't uh, think why at the time. Um, uh, Thing, uh, uh, other things you want to talk about are things that people can uh, relate to. Um, don't get up there talking about things that are that are that are like strictly specific to you. You know, um, I'll give an example. I had a I had a friend of mine uh, who had done comedy for a little while, and he had started. He had come to the open mics with a lightsaber on his hip, and he would never talk about the lightsaber. And we would tell him like, man, look, you gonna have to talk about that lightsaber, bro. You can't just be up on stage. And have something that noticeable and something that's not a part of your outfit and not say something about it or it serves as a distraction for the audience. Um, so uh, don't take yourself too seriously. Be able to joke about yourself. Uh, you want to find anything that's funny and incorporate it into your set however you can. Funny is currency. It don't matter what it is. It's about you, your mom, your dad. Make it funny. All right, so now what happens if material ain't working? You done did everything. You done wrote out stuff. You talk about how big you are, how bald your head is, and it's still not working. They're not laughing at you. Um, don't give up on the joke the very first time it, it don't work. Um, give it a shot uh, multiple times. Uh, you're going to have to start. Uh, it's really as small as sometimes substituting in words or phrases or in and out. You know, uh, you really got to tweak it. You almost got to become a mechanic with these words and, 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 and really see maybe if I take this word out and substitute that word, you know, um, it's really a process. Don't give up super fast on a joke. What I typically tend to do um, is I will try a joke out at least three times. Um, the first time, if it bombs horribly, then I'm picking out words and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm trying to see what I can do. I'm also recording my set so I can go back and listen to it later. Um, if it doesn't work uh, first, I switch it up and do it about two more times at a couple of different stages. Any part of the joke that works, I personally hold on to it. I might write it down. I might X out the whole joke from the set, but I might take down this note, like this joke worked or, or this one part of the joke worked, um, uh, uh, but the rest of it was just bullshit. Um, so don't be afraid to try uh, working out these jokes. And it's also going to be, and that goes along with two, hitting these open mics as often as you can um, because, you know, repetition is the father of learning. The more times you have at these uh, jokes, uh, the more you'll be able to recognize uh, why it's not working and be able to fix it uh, when it doesn't. Um, so when your jokes aren't working, don't give up on them. Keep at them. Um, rule of thumb, man, if you can't get any laughs at about three times, like if it's completely bombing three different times, you might want to scrap it, but any part of it, you want to salvage it and try to make sure that you hold on to anything that lasts. I can't stress enough how much you are digging for funny stuff. Uh, so keep the material going, keep it going, keep it going, keep working on it, and um, one day it won't suck. All right, so finding a comedy community is important. I mean, you could lone wolf this shit, um, but it'll be harder to bounce ideas off of regular people. There is kind of a, a state of mind that kind of, oh, all comedians, not all comedians, but we kind of have, and we pay attention to detail, and we're, we're the type of people 
you want to bounce these kind of ideas off of. Again, lone wolf the shit if you want to, um, but it's better together. The best way to find a comedy community is really uh, to hang out around the comedy club in the area. Whatever the local, whatever the closest comedy club is to you, get out and start hanging around. You'll start, you'll start uh, finding more people locally uh, doing comedy. If you can't get to a comedy club, maybe it's too far away from you, you can always hit social media. I'm from Columbus. Um, well, I'm originally from Toledo, um, and I moved to Columbus about a year into my comedy career. In both Toledo and Columbus, uh, there were uh, social media groups on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter even, um, where you can find people locally in your area um, to, to get with. And comedians are typically... Uh, welcome a group of people um, as long as you're an actual, as long as you're trying to be a comedian, not trying to be somebody who's like just leeching off the scene. Um, so do your best to find um, people in the scene in your area, uh, hit social media, um, hang out at the comedy clubs, talk to other comedians. Um, again, the, com the community is so important because normal people aren't going to want to hear your, uh, your jokes uh, when you're not on stage. I... Um, try to run jokes by friends who are not in the business. Even my wife and family who are not in the business. Shit's just not funny to them. Even when it is funny, it's it's a, I can't. It's hard to explain. Comedians are a certain tribe of people, and if you and if and if you feel that in you that stand up comedy is something that you want to try, get around those people. And if those are people that you vibe with, it can also be another indication that it's something that you could be successful in. Because it is, the shit is scary when you're not when you've never done it. So. You know, if that's something that could give you a little bit more, like, I get these guys, I can be one of these guys, um, you know, it'll be really important to find a community, um, it'll be helpful, rather, for your um, comedy adventure, if you want to call it that, to find yourself a community. Um, in, finding a comedy, in finding a comedy community, find friends that are going to support your comedy. Um, people that are going to come to shows that you invite them to, uh, because a part of finding a comedy community is uh, vibing with the club. Clubs will let you on stage if you bring people to watch the show. Um, so if you, on top of finding a comedy community, find a comedy support system uh, among friends and family as well. So let's say you do stand-up comedy. You're going to have... A plethora of stories about weird ass people and weird ass situations and just bad shows or bad um, encounters. Don't let them discourage you. They're just a part of the process. They're a part of stand up. Um, you know, pe for whatever reason, people think that being accessible, you being accessible, gives them, you know, an excuse to be awkward and be weird and, you know, say weird things to you. I don't know why people think that com comedians want to hear that, you know, and be a part of weird shit when we're on, not on stage. But if you step into it, you're going to have some weird-ass gigs and some weird-ass shows and some weird-ass encounters. Um, I had a really weird encounter uh, up in Cadillac, Michigan one time uh, where I, I go do a show in Cadillac, Michigan. It's just this small little town with maybe a bar, a couple bars, um, tiny, tiny place. And uh, this dude, man, he had... First of all, he's a redneck, and he had no, all these teeth was gone, and he had these fingers. He had these three fingers right here, and, uh, and, it's not, and I'm the only black guy here, mind you. And uh, the dude goes, he comes out of the bar, I'm, 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 it was a bar I'm performing at. I come out of the bar, I'm chilling, and uh, he comes out of the bar, and he's a, a little drunk, and he goes, uh, you're real good, you're real funny, and, and I know what you're thinking, and I like black people, but we don't like niggers around here, and you ain't gotta be black to be a nigger, and, and look, I, get, I got the sentiment, he was trying to be, look, I'm not, you know, I'm not a racist, anybody could be a bad guy, it doesn't, the skin color don't matter, I got that part, but why are you talking to me, the only black man in this whole fucking city right now, about some racist shit, leave me the fuck alone. So that's the type of shit that you're going to deal with. Don't be discouraged. People are, and don't take it personal either. I could have been very, I could have been a dick and took that shit personally and tried to fight that guy there. But you are, you are at work, really. You know what I'm saying? You are supposed to be the professional in the situation. Let shit like that roll. He didn't mean nothing by it. 
I wasn't hurt. It was cool. I did leave immediately, though. I got the fuck up out of there. Um, <laughs> also, um, just speaking of bad experiences, um, you're going to be dealing with bombing. You're going to be dealing with weird people. Um, you're also going to be dealing with janky-ass promoters. You may run across people who might try to stiff you on your money. Um, you know, get paid as much as you can up front. Require a deposit. Hey, I need 15% up front. You know, I had a situation where I had a... Um, a show with a with a with a pretty significant celebrity in the '90s, and uh, the promoter for the show um, didn't promote the show at all. We he didn't have a crowd. He didn't pay us. It was all bad. So um, make sure that you do everything you can to insulate yourself from shit like janky promoters by asking for as much of percentage that you think is fair of your pay up front. All right, so now let's talk about bombing. Uh, because you're a new comedian, you're not really good. You're going to bomb. Um, don't be afraid to bomb. And I know that's easier said than done. But the worst that's going to happen to you is that they're going to boo you and run you off the stage. But that's probably not going to happen. That is the absolute worst. What's probably going to happen is they're just going to sit quietly and look at you. And I know that's weird, but it's not the end of the world. So don't be afraid to bomb because when... What happens when you're afraid to bomb is that you're afraid to try new things. You're afraid to try things that you don't think will be funny. Um, don't do that to yourself. You're selling yourself short. Bombing is a learning experience. Um, you only know what worked because you know what don't work. You know, So uh, be prepared uh, to um, not have a good go at it up front. Again, if you're true to the, to the craft and really want to give this thing a try... You can't be afraid of bombing. Bombing is, is is valuable. It helps you show. It shows you uh, what doesn't work. And everybody's going to bomb. I bomb. I bombed recently. Um, I've been doing comedy for 10 years, and I bombed recently. I had a show for some black ma some ma some black masons, some, some Freemasons who were black and uh, old black people. I was at a, I was at a, 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 hol a double tree. And uh, if you've ever performed at a hotel, most of the time you're in one of the ballrooms and it's just a wooden dance floor, no stage, and everybody's surrounding you. And I'm doing the show, I'm doing time, I'm doing like 30 minutes, and I'm getting no laughs. I'm getting zero laughs. I'm sweating because I'm nervous, I'm embarrassed, and I scream, and I go, and I go to leave the stage, and I go, all right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. And somebody in the back yelled at me, good! <laughs> and, I, and I didn't know what to say. So so I tried to give myself more time. And I was like, what did you say? And he said, I said good. And in that amount of time, I still hadn't thought of anything. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get out of here, guys. So don't be afraid to bomb, man. And I'm still here. Look, I'm here. I'm smiling. I'm still a comedian. Everything's great. So uh, don't be afraid to bomb. It's a, it's a, it's a valuable learning experience. And when, you, when you're afraid to bomb... All you're going to do is keep doing the same five-minute sets over and over again, and that's not going to sustain if you want to be uh, a good stand-up uh, comedian. So uh, don't shy away from bombing. When you bomb, bomb graciously. Don't attack the crowd. And leave immediately after your set. That part is a judgment call, but I don't want to stick around and tell, talk to people about why my set sucked, and uh, now i got to convince people off the stage, no, I'm really a comedian. I really do this. I'm personally splitting after the bomb. Do what you do, but I'm splitting after the bomb. All right, so good luck. I've given you game. Good luck. If you're, if this is for you, um, my last piece of advice would probably be keep going. Do not stop. You can kind of tell. When you do comedy, whether it's for you or not, within like the first month or so, for me personally and all the co comedians I know, it didn't take them long to recognize uh, within themselves that this is what they wanted with their life. So keep, keep, keep going. Um, your life around comedy, shit's going to happen. Um, things are going to fall out of place. You're, you may have to take a break here or there from comedy to get your life in order to pick shit up. But... It serves a purpose, and when you leave it after you have it and you know it's for you, you feel weird. You feel incomplete. One thing that one thing that I actually discovered that I stopped doing 
when I started doing comedy was being funny around normal people. Like it was almost like I needed to be funny, and I get that from comedy. So now I'm not annoying to regular people. So you're if it's something that you feel like you need to have, keep going. And uh, if you do have to take a break, take a break and call it a break. Don't feel guilty about letting comedy go um, if you have to. Um, but always know that it's there. Um, uh, don't be discouraged about, don't be discouraged if you're not seeing the type of success that you think you should be at a particular time in your process. Meaning that you have to measure success differently. It's, it's easy to measure success by how much money you have, how much you know how many how much your phone is ringing how many followers and likes and all this shit you have to you have to be your own competition you have to make it about what you want if you start focusing on what other people are doing and start focusing on other people's career path um, you're just going to drive yourself crazy um, so make sure you're in it for the right reasons understand it's going to if if we're talking stand up specifically um, it's going to take you a good 10 15 years um, to really get some headway and for people to start noticing you um, if you're doing this thing uh, the right way and for the right reasons. Um, you know, it's easy to, 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 to copy what other people are doing um, and, to kind of, and, and today's social media environment kind of makes it easy too. Um, so you can cheat, your, you can try to cheat your way to the top, but you can never cheat the process. So um, if you're going to stop, if you're going to take breaks, um, take your break. Don't be discouraged by the time that you're putting in. Um, and you won't be really if you're doing it for the right reasons. I personally have been trying to quit comedy for years. I can't do it. It's what I do. And I've, I've stopped and come back and, you know, it, it'll just be a part of me, man. So good luck. Don't quit. It's going to take you 20 years. Um, um, and good luck. All right, man, so that's it. That's all I got. Those are my comedic chapters. I'm Bobby Dodds. You're watching Slapstick Comedy. You can check me out everywhere. Bobby Dodds. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I'm on TikTok now. Bobby Dodds. You can check my website out, bobbydodds.com. That's B-O-B-B-I-E-D-O-D-D-S.com. Check out my podcast, Comedians on South High, with myself, Jason Banks, and Kenny Mock. Um, we'll see you. Thanks for having me. Slapstick! Boy, stop staying! Oh, okay, quick. <laughs>